Hello from Fox News in Washington. Another unprecedented week in politi uh, presidential politics with all the attention on Donald Trump, the former president and dominant frontrunner for the Republican nomination. This time back here in the nation's capital where he pleaded not guilty to felony counts in special counsel Jack Smith's investigation into alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Trump will not appear in person this Thursday in Florida after he pleaded not guilty to new charges in a superseding indictment related to the classified documents case there. That same day, there is a hearing on a motion filed by Trump's team in Georgia to remove the Fulton County DA from her investigation into alleged efforts to overturn election results in that state. Bonnie Willis has indicated an indictment of Trump or others could be imminent. All of this attention deflecting from the rest of the GOP field vying for the White House in 2024 and from President Biden, who at 80 years old is running for a second four year term and could face a potential campaign liability in his son Hunter's own legal troubles. Let's turn now to Trump attorney John Laurel. John, welcome to Fox News Sunday. Good morning. OK, so let's start here. Um, Friday night, the president, former president, had a post that wound up in a filing before the court. Here it is. Jack Smith's office submitted a filing to the judge in this D.C. case, citing this. If you go after me, I'm coming after you. Smith's now asking the judge for a protective order, arguing this, that the court needs to take action that saying if the defendant were to begin issuing public posts using details or, for example, grand jury transcripts obtained in discovery here, it could have a harmful chilling effect on witnesses or adversely affect the fair administration of justice in this case. Uh, the judge asked you to respond by Monday. You filed asking for an extension. She said no. So how will you respond on Monday? And do you worry this could escalate into a potential gag order? This is the problem with bringing a political prosecution in a political season. President Trump was responding in a political way to some of his um, political opponents. And the, uh, the Biden administration wants the judge to, to put in place an order that will prevent the press from obtaining exculpatory and material information that might be relevant to these proceedings, even though Mr. Trump, President Trump, has argued from the very beginning, as I have, that this is an attack, this indictment is an attack on his First Amendment rights. Now what the Biden administration wants to do is deny all Americans the opportunity to learn non-sensitive information about what the case involves in a political season. We have to remember that President Biden, back in April 2022, which he repeated in November 2022, was that he was going to take President Trump out of the election, even though President Trump is his most significant opponent. Now we see the Biden Justice Department acting on the Biden plan. So President Trump, in the middle of a political season, is certainly entitled to respond politically. But make no mistake about it, this is an effort to prevent President Trump from running for president. Ironically, the same theories that are being used in this indictment against President Trump could be used against President Biden for enlisting his Justice Department uh, under the Biden plan to prevent Donald Trump from running for president. So let's talk about the charges, though. You say this is an attack on the First Amendment. The Justice Department recognizes that former President Trump had and has First Amendment rights to say, thing, in, say things. In the indictment itself, it says this. The defendant had a right, like every American, to speak publicly about the election and even to claim falsely that there had been outcome determinative fraud during the election and that he had won. The rest of the indictment, though, is about the conduct, not just the speech. Well, yeah, the, the First Amendment protects conduct as well as speech. But what the Justice Department, the Biden administration, doesn't do is reference what's the conduct at issue. Uh, President Trump did not issue any executive orders or, or do anything in terms of using the levers of executive power. He simply petitioned and asked uh, state legislatures and state electoral officials around the country uh, to act responsibly. In fact, he petitioned, not directed, he petitioned his own vice president ultimately to pause the voting on January 6th in order to allow the states to weigh in on auditing or recertifying. All of that is core 
First Amendment protected speech. Um, in fact, everyone, whether you're a president of the United States or, or an ordinary citizen like you or me, can petition their government with, with grievances or requests to redress actions that were taken by the government. That's exactly what President Trump did. This is core political speech that's being attacked under the Biden plan. You know the argument here is that you can talk about a conspiracy, you can talk about anything you want to, but the allegation is that underlying conspiracy is not free because of free speech issues. I want to read something from New Republic says this. If this unbounded view of free speech applied consistently, it would eliminate most state and federal crimes. They say um, perjury is free speech, could be argued. Bribery is speech, many types of fraud are speech, insider trading is speech, identity theft is speech, forging checks is speech. They go on and on. They say First Amendment protects all kinds of things, but organizing a coup d'etat is not one of them. Your response? Well, what do you think the obvious problem is with that statement? None of, none of those examples involve political speech. That's the point. All of those examples involve core criminal activity. But what we have here is, is political speech where President Trump is uh, petitioning the government, of course, saying something um, fraudulent in a prospectus or in an accounting statement is not protected, or, or, you know, robbing a bank is not protected. But all of those examples are ridiculous because the First Amendment protects political speech higher than any other speech. So the reality is that if you're going to talk about the law, you have to understand what the First Amendment says and what it stands for. And all of the examples in this indictment are core political speech. Every single thing that President Trump is being prosecuted for involved aspirational asks asking state legislatures, asking state governors, asking state electoral officials to do the right thing. In fact, even asking Vice President Pence was protected by free speech. None of that is illegal. Okay, quickly. We have the right in our system to petition our government. I want to ask you quickly, um, you have said that you think that this move by the protective order is to keep people from seeing all of the information. So would you be okay with the president's support a televised trial? I mean, it would have to go through all kinds of hoops and rule changes and those kinds of things, but let the American people see every minute of it and decide for themselves? I, I'm, yeah, I, I, I personally would love to see that. I'm convinced the Biden administration does not want the American people to see the truth. Um, and they, they acted on it by filing this protective order, which is an effort to keep important information about this case from the press. I'm shocked, actually, that all the networks haven't lined up and filed pleadings already objecting to this, um, this, this very broad attempt by the Biden administration to keep information away from the American people during the election season. The American people have a right to know. Of course, Joe Biden doesn't want that to happen. Okay, we will watch for your response to the judge and to the Justice Department on that point on Monday. And of course, we'll follow all of this. John Laurel, thanks for joining us. Hey, it's Will Kane. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News channel on YouTube. It's the best way to get our latest interviews and highlights. And click to subscribe to the Will Kane podcast for full episodes right now.